This is a short tutorial about repairing meshes which have been scanned and you need to tidy up. So I recommend downloading Autodesk Mesh Mixer which is available for Windows and Mac. It's a great tool for doing cleanup of scanned objects and is pretty easy to use once you get into it and uh, is really good for simple repair jobs. So I'm going to import an STL and show you the basics of tidying up this mesh. So this is really suited for cleaning up uh, busts if you want to get a nice flat surface on the shoulders and the bust area. It will do that for you very simply and I'll show you how that's done. Now these, it immediately shows you problem areas highlighted in red. These are holes in the mesh that would have to be fixed if you were to go to 3D printing. I can rotate the object by holding down Alt on the Mac. And you'll also see these red banded areas. These are showing red because they're too thin. They're really too thin to print. Those could be inflated or cut away. So I'll show you how to do a simple cutting first of all. So go to Edit, Plane Cut, and you'll see a grid with some handles. If you rotate around, you get a better idea of where you are. So here we have, as default, the object positioned as it is would be cut in half down the middle of the head, which is probably not what you want. So take these handles, take the red one, and begin to turn it. And you'll see that you get arbitrary figures. If you pull the mouse out to this clock face type thing, you'll get a snap. And I'm going to snap there to 90 degrees. Then I can take the blue handle and drag that plane to whatever position I like. So, because we have all this extra thin material, I'm going to have to bring it up above that. Now what I can do is say I don't want the 90 degrees, I want something else which matches more closely the object. So I'm parallel to the base, I drag it down, keeping as much of the figure as possible. Now you notice the head is transparent and the base is solid. This is because if I were to click accept, I would be accepting to keep the base and lose the head. But I don't want to do that. I want to keep the head, obviously, and lose the base. So I click the big blue arrow, which reverses the direction of the cut. Now I can see that I'm retaining the top and losing the bottom. And you can see this orange selected surface is the area of the cut. So if I'm happy with that, I click Accept. And there we are, a nice flat base. So if I look closely, I've got some unpleasant areas on the shoulder. I can also use the plane cut to make a more specific angle of cut. This is going to be a bit trickier. But if I bring this green one down, 
then I can make that parallel with the existing edge. Something like that. And then drag that out to the edge. There we are. Now you can see it's it's going to cut straight down and take away too much material. So I'm going to angle that. Until I get it right, keeping as much of the model as I can. I'm going to reverse that again so I can see that we're keeping the bust, cutting off the shoulder. I want perhaps a little more of an angle there so. I can check. Okay, so let's give it a little bit of the green. Not too much. That's good. And then bring it up to the edge. And if you're happy with that, you can accept. And there we have a much more attractive edge. And I can repeat the same for the other side. Now, Mesh Mixer is good for all sorts of cleaning, but we have a problem in that this model consists of several objects combined. It's not simply one, what you might call watertight object, which is the only type of object which is really suitable for printing. The printer could get confused by objects which are inside other objects. So we can try to clean up these holes and then see what objects we have. If we want to do a cleanup, we go to Analysis Inspector and then you get all these handles which show where holes have to be repaired. You can simply stick with flat fill and if you do an auto repair it will automatically fill all those holes making the object solid. However, you will notice we've lost the eyes. The eyes have gone. I'll show you how to fix those issues later in the video. If you find that the plane cut is too simple for your requirements and you need to cut more complex shapes away, you can do so by selecting an area and you can either use the brush tool to select or you can use a lasso. If I want to take away something like this, I could lasso this and then those areas are selected and then I could erase and fill and those are now sealed press accept and you have a sealed model Mesh Mixer is also useful for 
softening, smoothing areas. You have in the sculpt panel, brushes, um, smooth, drag, various, inflate. If something's too thin, you can inflate it, reduce the size of your brush. See how that's building up the thickness of this edge. This is nice to have in a simple, easy to use, free downloadable program. It's really very versatile. Those areas can be inflated. They can be smoothed to reduce the complexity. You see. So you can really do some nice tidying up within Mesh Mixer itself. And you could actually do some quite serious sculpting. But obviously for more complex work you would go over to ZBrush. But I can do a pretty good job tidying up areas like this. You also have um, measuring facilities. You can see how large an object is from one side to another. figures displayed on the right. You can take a look at the size in the Edit Transform panel. I can see that this object is 16 millimeters by 10 millimeters. And I can change that to scale the object type in 200, uniform scaling, and then the rest of the axes follow. Accept that. Now my object is 200 millimeters tall. Now recenter the view to have a look. And there we are. The object is 200 centimeters. The how many objects are combined. You can bring up the objects browser and here you'll have all the objects that you currently have. Now if you want to see what's going on with this object click the eye to get an x-ray view and here we can see there's some things going on. We have something going on with the neck. So the, the head is one object. The bust is another object. And there seem to be two sets of eyeballs. The set which we can see and another set inside. So you can actually combine and make solid all the objects in Mesh Mixer. It does a pretty good job. If we go to Edit, Make Solid, it'll do an automatic, rather low resolution version for you, which is the fast version. Um, but the reduction in quality is too much. So let's go to Accurate increase the solid accuracy to the maximum, increase the mesh density to the maximum, and try and update that and see what happens. It could take a bit of time. So 
we now have a new version, a solid version, as you can see in the object browser, while keeping the original version. There doesn't seem to be any real loss in quality. Uh, so, however, we can see there's some lines which have been created around the neck where this join took place. We could just smooth that out with our smooth brush. Increase the strength a bit. And you can see those lines start to disappear. You don't want to make the brush too big and affect the overall form. But it's very good for a tidy up. So, there we go. Now, let's have a look at what's happened to the number of holes, which I predict will be much better. There's one strange hole here. Let's see if that can be fixed. Yep. So, we now have an object which is perfectly suitable for printing. And I could export that object at the correct scale. As an STL or an object. STL within MeshMixer seems to result in a smaller file size. So I'm going to save as an STL. ZBrush only accepts OBJ files, therefore we would need to save it as an OBJ in order to work on it further in ZBrush.